So we're going to do example number one, where we are given customers arrive at a bakery at an average rate of 18 per hour. The arrival distribution follows a Poisson distribution. Each server can serve in an average of four minutes. Sorry, uh, each server can serve a customer in an average of four minutes. And service durations are exponential distribu exponentially distributed. The questions are, what are the average arrival and service rate? So what do you think? Now you should be more familiar than when you started that uh, these videos. So average arrival rate, this is lambda, number of people arriving to the system, so which is very clearly given to us here. So lambda equal to 18 customers per hour. Now, what about that? What's that four minutes? This is our service time. Service time is four minutes. So how can I find the service rate? As we learned before, these are inversely related. So mu is 1 over service time, so which means it's 1 over 4. And this gives me 0 0.25, but customers per minute, right? Because we are dividing by 4 minutes. And this does not comply with the time units used in lambda, which is hours. So I have to change one of these. I prefer always to increase the time unit. So I would change that from minute to hours. How? I just multiply by 60. And this will give me, um, here we go. Okay, so I multiply by 60 and I get mu equal 15 customers per hour. Now these two are matching and we will be fine. All right, so we answered the first part, which is very, very essential. And now we are ready to answer any other question now that we have lambda and the mu. So we found um, in the previous slide that lambda is equal to 18, uh, mu is equal to 15. So let's also find this ratio that I told you about. We're going to use it a lot. So lambda over mu, 18 over 15, so we have 1.2. We're going to see that a lot. All right. Now, part B, calculate the average number of customers being served at any time. Remember what's that? This is R, and R is equal to lambda over mu. So that's it. I have it already calculated. It's equal to 1.2. And it's very important, and I'm going to insist on this, guys, that you specify the units of the measure that you are finding. Okay, so in our case, because we're finding the number of customers being served at any point of time, these are customers. Okay, so that's 1.2 customers and don't be shy to show an answer of 1.2 customers guys um, yes it makes sense to leave it like this because remember in waiting line all the performance measures are given on average okay so when we see 1.2 that's fine okay 1.2 because sometimes it's zero sometimes it's one two three five no matter it can be at the maximum of m right so on average, it's 1.2 customers. Then here we are given that we found that on average 3.6 customers wait in line. What's that? This is LQ, right? Because 3.6 wait in line. So this is LQ. It's given to us. And we want to, to find the following. So we need to find the number of customers in the system. And this is LS using the basic relationship L, S is LQ plus lambda over mu. So that 3.6, which is given, 1.2, we just got it before, and 4.8 customers. Then the second is average time a customer wait in line. So that's WQ, which is LQ over lambda. So we get 3.6 over 18. Now, we get a, a, an answer of 0 0.2. 0 0.2, what, how can I tell what's the time unit in my result? It's easy because this time unit comes from lambda, and lambda is 18 customers per hour, so that should be in hour. But for me, honestly, personally, I don't, I, I, I cannot interpret 0 0.2 hour, but I can easily interpret that when I convert it into minutes. So I multiply that by 60, I get 12 minutes. Yes, I have a very good feeling what 12 minutes, uh, how long it is. Finally, we need to find the average time that spent in the system. So this is WS, and we know that WS is WQ plus the service time. 
and tourist time is given in the first place, right? And this is another reason why it was a good idea to convert that into minutes because the service time was given in minutes in the first place. So 12 plus 4, that's 16 minutes. Could we get it in another way? Yes, we could. We could uh, wrote WS is LS over lambda. We have LS, we have lambda, we can find it. And certainly you'll get the same answer. And now we want to find uh, the server utilization. And they want to find the server utilization if we have two, we have three, or we have four servers. Server utilization, we know that it's rho equal lambda over mu. We know what's lambda, we know what's mu, and m is given as we want to change it between two, three, and four. So for m is equal to two, just plug the figures and you will get it. It's 0 0.6. What does it mean, 0 0.6? Interpret it. That means a server on average would be busy 60% of the time. Okay? If we had three servers, what do you think would happen to the uh, to the, the percentage of time he is busy? What do you think? Before you do the calculation, it should decrease, of course, because we have now more more customers, for, uh, sorry, more servers for the same arrivals. So certainly the uh, uh, row will, will be less. And here we go. Now it's 40% of the time. The, he will be busy 40% of the time only. Okay, and for M equals 6, it's even worse. Uh, for M equals 4, sorry, we have 30% of the time. Okay, which means here we have an idle time of 40%, here we have an idle time of 60%, and here I have an idle time of 70%. And this is something that we need to think about whenever we design our capacity. Because as you could see, as we are increasing the capacity, what's happening to the efficiency is decreasing. How do we know? Here I'm referring to the, to the efficiency by the percentage of time a person is busy. Anyway, we're going to tackle this issue later.